ಸದಾರಣ ಪರಮಾನಂದ ಮಾಧವಂ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಈಶ್ವರ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನರಂ ಶೈವಾನರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತೋ ಜಯ ಮುದೀರೇ ನಷ್ಟ ಪ್ರಾಯಶ ಭದ್ರೇಶು ನಿತ್ಯ ಭಾಗವತಿ ಸೇವೆಯ ಭಗವತಿ ಉತ್ತ ಶ್ಲೋಕೈರ್ಭಕ್ತಿರ್ಭವತಿ ನೈಷ್ಟಿಕೆ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಕಾಂಟಿ ಟು ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಫ್ರೀ and we on verse 23 so i continue prabhu ji so i read the the verse you are mute you are mute prabhu ji you are mute shashwin uh, you would like to do the verse shashwin has a new look today ha ha he has a new look hare krishna ಮನುಜಸ್ತು ಪಸ್ಸಾನಿಸುಹತ್ಪಾದರಾಜೋಭಿಷೇಕ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶಶ್ವಿನ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಟುಡೇ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಸಪೋಸ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅವರ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕರ್ ಬಟ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಡ್ಯೂ ಟು ಅನ್ಅವಾರ್ಡಬಲ್ ಕನ್ ಸರ್ಕಮ್ಸ್ಟಾನ್ಸಸ್ ವಿ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಮಾತಾಜಿ ವಾಸ್ ಯು ನೋ ಪ್ಲಾನಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಡೂ ಅ ರೆಕಾರ್ಡೆಡ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಬೈ is holiness giriraj swami but let me let me ch- search and then i'll i'll start playing uh, shashwin can you make me the host babu <clears throat> ji can we read the word to word translation in the me- in the meantime yes yes mataji you can you can read okay okay jeevan while living savaha a dead body Bhagavata Angri Renum, the dust of the feet of a few devotees, no, never, jatu at any time, martya, mortal, abhivetata, particularly received, yaha, a person, too, but, shri, with opulence, vishnu, padya, of the lotus feet of vishnu, manjuha, a descendant of manu, a man, tulasa, tulasyaha, leaves of the tulsi tree, swasna, while breathing sabaha still a dead body ya who to but no veda never experience gandham the aroma yes mata ji you can continue the translation and purport okay okay translation the person who has not at any time received the dust of the feet of the lord's few devotee upon his head is certainly a dead body and the man and the person who has never experienced the aroma of the tulas leaves from the lotus feet of the lord is also a dead body older breathing but both according to shri vishwana chakravarti thakur the breathing dead body is a ghost when a man dies he is called dead but when he again appears in a subtle form not visible to our present vision and yet acts such a dead body is called a ghost ghosts are always very bad elements always creating a fearful situation for others similarly <clears throat> the ghost like non devotees who have no respect for the few devotees no for the vishnu deity in the temples create a fearful situation for the devotees at all time the lord never accepts any offering by such impure ghosts there is a common saying that one should first love the dog of the beloved before one shows any loving sentiments for the beloved this this stage of pure devotion is attained by sincerely serving a pure devotee of the lord 
The first condition of devotional service to the Lord is therefore to be a servant of a few devotees. And this condition is fulfilled by the statement, reception of the dust of the lotus feet of a few devotees who has also served another few devotees. That is a way of pure discipline succession or devotional parampara. Marad Rahugana inquired from the great saint Jad Bharat as to how he had attained such a liberated state of Paramahansa. And in answer, the great saint replied as follows from Bhagavatam 5.12.12. Rahu Ganeta Tapasana Yati Nache Jaya Nirvipana Grihava Nachanda Sanaiva Jalagni Surier Vina Mahat Father Jobisekam. O King Rahugana, the perfectional stage of devotional service, O the Paramahansa stage of life, cannot be attained unless one is blessed by the dust of the feet of great devotees. It is never attained by tapasya, sincerity, the Vedic worshipping process, acceptance of the renounced order of life, the discharge of the duties of household life, the chanting of the, of the Vedic hymns, or the performance of penances in the hot sun, within cold water, or before the blazing fire. In other words, Lord Sri Krishna is a, proper, is a property of his few and good unconditional devotees. And as such, only the devotees can deliver Krishna to another devotee. Krishna is never obtainable directly. So Chaitanya therefore designated himself as Gopi Bhardur Pada Kamalayot Das and Das and Das, or the most obedient servant of the servants of the Lord, who maintains the Gopi Damsel at Vrindavrana. A few devotee therefore never approaches the Lord directly but tries to please the servant of the Lord's servants, and thus the Lord becomes pleased, and only then can the devotee relish the taste of the Tulsi leaves stuck up to, the, to his lotus feet. In the Brahma Samhita, it is said that the Lord is never to be found by becoming a great scholar of the Vedic literatures, but he is very easily approachable through his pure devotees. In Vrindavana, all the pure devotees pray for the mercy of Srimati Radharani, the pleasure potency of Lord Krishna. Srimati Radharani is a tender-hearted feminine counterpart of the Supreme Whole, resembling the perfectional stage of the worldly feminine nature. Therefore, the mercy of Radharani is available very readily to the sincere devotees. And once she recommends such a devotee to Lord Krishna, the Lord at once accepts the devotee's admittance into his association. The conclusion is, therefore, that one should be more serious about seeking the mercy of the devotee than that of the Lord directly. And by once doing so, by the good will of the devotee, the natural attraction for the service of the Lord will be revived. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, thank you, Mataji, for reading the, the translation and the purport and the word to word. Uh, so let me start playing. There is one Prabhupada, so Prabhupada's lecture also. Uh, let me try playing that. Home from what? An attacker. Global. Shop be like you. Order, Order anything you want and dance away. Order Global and receive it in minutes. What if I do that? Are you able to hear the sound? Yes, Kabaji. Yes. Okay.
The following is a class on the Srimad Bhagavatam, 2nd Canto, 3rd Chapter, Text Number 23, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on June 20th, 1972, in Los Angeles. Sometimes when he sees the dust and the feet of a pure devotee of the Lord, find his death. Certainly it is a dead body. And the first food is never experienced the pleasure of the folks who leave. The devotee's feet of the Lord. It also is a dead body of the Lord. Uh, Prahlad Maharaj was asked by his father, uh, how did you develop the Krishna consciousness? So he replied that this Krishna consciousness cannot be developed. Prishat ti anartha upasamo jana. Krishna consciousness, development of Krishna consciousness means anartha upasama. Anartha means things we do not require. Anartha anartha. Artha means which is essentially required. <coughs> and anartha means which is not required. Artificially we have uh, requisition. So when one grows his Krishna consciousness, immediately his artificial life becomes uh, finished. Bhakti parashanu bhava virakti anastasya. This is the symptom of development of Krishna consciousness. That he is not anymore interested for material unnecessary things. This is the test. If one is increasing Krishna consciousness, at the same time, he has got full attachment for material things, that means he is not aware. Material things means ahara nidra vayama eating, sleeping, mating, and defense. So, Sometimes the karmis are afraid of this Krishna consciousness moment because they know that as soon as one becomes Krishna conscious, he is no more interested in this material. We say, don't eat meat. All people become Krishna conscious and give up meat eating, then the slaughterhouse will be closed. Automatically. Uh, we say <coughs> no meat eating and no intoxication. So if, if all people become Krishna conscious and give up uh, drinking and smoking, the big business, breweries and cigarette manufacturers will be closed. Similarly, no illicit sex. Uh, if people take to Krishna consciousness, then so many brothers and class and nudis and everything will be closed. So they are afraid of their business. Therefore, they don't encourage this moment. Because ultimately, if this moment goes on, then where they stand? Uh, Everywhere we go, the advertisement is for intoxication, for sex, and for meat eating. These are the advertisements. <coughs> Business is going on very nice. 
Srimad Bhagavatam. Then you go and study Srimad Bhagavatam from the pure devotees. Then you will understand. Otherwise, you will write all this nonsense. Bhagavata Parodhya, Bhagavata. The one Bhagavata, the two Bhagavata. You study Srimad Bhagavatam from living Bhagavata. So, if one does not take or does not surrender to the living Bhagavata, he cannot understand Srimad Many scholarly, learned scholars, Sanskrit scholars, they cannot understand Bhagavata. I have seen many scholars. They cannot understand Bhagavata. Sanskrit scholars, they will read but they will not be able to understand. Similarly, Bhagavad Gita also. If anyone studies Bhagavad Gita from scholarly point of view, ABCD, he will not. Krishna therefore said that Arjuna, I shall speak the lessons of Bhagavata to you because you are my very dear friend and you are my devotee. Krishna did not want to speak Srimad Bhagavad Gita to a scholarly student. No. These books are not to be understood by mundane scholarship. That is not possible. All the Vedics are. All the Vedics are. There, there is a big commentary on Bhagavad Gita by a great scholar and political leader, Lokmanya Tilak. So, uh, one of his devotees, devotee is also a politician, when I was in London, 1968. So, he has got a society there, preaching the uh, Tilak's political view like that. He has got a, so he came to see me, and he was very much eulogizing Lokmana Tila that he has written his big commentary, Karma Yoga. So he wanted to invite me in talk on Tila's great task. So I told him that Tila does not understand Bhagavad <laughs> So immediately he was surprised. Then we had a talk, and I convinced him that Tila was a politician, maybe a big scholar, but that does not mean he can understand Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is understood by devotee. He may be illiterate, it doesn't matter. Uh, still, uh, as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sacrificed the illiterate brahmin who was reading Bhagavad Gita in Ramana's temple, you know the story. Uh, the brahmin was illiterate. Uh, his guru ordered him that you read Bhagavad Gita daily, 18 chapters. So he could not uh, refuse the order of Guru Maharaj. So he was taking the book and simply saying, so those who knew that he was illiterate, they were criticizing. Well, Brahmin, how were you doing Bhagavad Gita? He could not answer because he knew that I am illiterate, I do not know. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw this fun and approached him, well, Brahmin, what you are reading? So he could understand that this Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has not come to criticize me, he's serious. So he informed me, Sir, I am reading Bhagavad Gita, but I am illiterate. I am illiterate, but my spiritual master has ordered to read. Uh, so what can I do? I have taken this book 
It is simply moving on account of the presence of the spirit soul. As far as the spirit soul is out of this body, out of this bag of place and bones, uh, we are so much attached to this bag of place and bones. Uh, but those who are learned, they know that this body is nothing but place and bones. The real uh, person, the real force is the soul. The chakra buddhi kunapi tidha, the bag of uh, bones and flesh. This is not uh, our identification. I am not this body. Uh, do you think if you uh, take some bones and flesh, uh, accumulate them, and uh, bundle them, Will they produce an intelligence? Uh, if I am this body, then this body means a, a bundle of flesh and bones. And flesh and bones can be had outside. The scientists can take them and bind them together and then uh, see that it is coming. Uh, scientist, another scientist, Professor Einstein, is coming from the bones and the plate. Is it possible? Uh, it is not possible. The bones and plates are bones and plates. Uh, the real identity is the soul. According to his uh, karma, he manifests his intelligence. Uh, although uh, <clears throat> this intelligence is coming out through these bones and flesh. Uh, the flesh I am seeing through this uh, glass, that does not mean the glass is seen. Uh, the seeing power is different from the glass. Similarly, uh, those who are uh, thinking that they are this body, and that bodily concept of life, just chāsa buddhi kuna peti dhātiti sadhip kanatra visu bhava ijyadhi jati tha buddhi salile na karpiti jane tu abhiti tu saliva gokhara. Bhagavad says, one who accepts this body as itself is no better than the cow and the ass. Foolish and I have several times explained why as is called foolish, why cow is not foolish. Simple, cow is simple, cow is ah. <clears throat> So they are compared with animals, one to accept. Therefore, uh, this body uh, continues to be animal body or um, dead body unless in the human form of life one takes advantage of touching the dust of the lotus feet of a devotee. Jivan Chavo Bhagavatam Hidinu Najat Makto Hiravita Jasti. Sri Vishnu Pratya Manajasturajya. Tatan Chabu just to Nabir Dandha. The nostril, the smell. Uh, so, our Krishna consciousness many men, we should offer all nice flowers and tulsi on the lotus feet of the Lord. And we shall accept prasad, uh, the priesthood of her. And if we smell that, then our smelling power is uh, fulfilled. Uh, that means uh, this Kumara, Tatushan Kumara, Son of Kumara, they are personal, impersonal. But after smelling this Tulsi leaf, which was offered to the lotus feet of Vishnu, they become personal. So, 
This is an opportunity. If anyone comes, uh, smells the flowers and the uh, tulsi offered to Vishnu, uh, uh, taste the Vishnu prasadam, uh, see the Lord, or in this way he develops Krishna consciousness. So this is opportunity. Uh, this simple means a, an opportunity, a process, a simple process, not simple uh, for, for ordinary man. But actually it is simple. Anyone can smell the flowers of Hare to Krishna. Anyone can eat the foodstuff of Hare to Krishna. Anyone can see the deity so nicely decorated. Anyone can hear Hare Krishna mantra. So we have got the senses. See, if we engage our senses in this way, uh, our seeing power, our hearing power, our talking power, our smelling power, our touching power, our tasting power, in this way, if we engage everything in connection with Krishna, very easily we become Krishna conscious. And as soon as we become Krishna conscious, then our life is successful. We become liberated from this bondage of birth and death. Uh, so this is part. Now we. So according to Sri Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, the breathing dead body is a ghost. When a man dies, he is called dead. But when he again appears in a subtle form, not visible to the present vision, and yet acts, such a dead body is called a ghost. Ghosts are always very bad elements, always creating a fearful situation for others. Similarly, the ghost-like non-devotees, who have no respect for the pure devotee, nor for the Vishnu deity in the temple, create a fearful situation for the devotees at all times. The Lord never accepts any offering by such impure ghosts. There is a common saying that one should first love the dog of the beloved before one shows any loving sentiment for the beloved. The stage of a pure devotee is attained by sincerely serving a pure devotee of the Lord. The first condition of devotional service of the Lord is therefore to be a servant of a pure devotee. And this condition is fulfilled by the statement, reception of the dust of the lotus feet of a pure devotee who also served another pure devotee. That is the way to cure disciplic succession or devotional form for us. Maharaj Rahugana inquired from the great saint Judge Bharata, as to how he attained such a liberated stage of a Paramahamsa. And in answer, the great saint replied as follows, Rahuganai satta prasana jatiya chejaya nirvapana grahatva nachas prasana evajalaji surya vinama patpada najobi chekam O King Rahugana, the perfectional stage of devotional service or the Paramahamsa stage of life cannot be attained without being blessed by the dust of the feet of great devotees. It is never attained by tapasya, austerity, the Vedic worshiping process, acceptance of renounced order of life, the discharge of the duties of household life, the chanting of Vedic hymns, or the performance of penances in the hot sun, within cold water, or before the blazing fire. In other words, Lord Sri Krishna is the property of his pure, unconditional devotees. And as such, only the devotees can deliver Krishna to another devotee. Krishna is never obtainable directly. Lord Chaitanya therefore designated himself as the Gopi Bhartur Dasa Dasa Dasani Dasa, or the most obedient servant of the servants of the Lord who maintains the Gopi damsels at Vrindavan. A pure devotee therefore never approaches the Lord directly, but tries to please the Lord's servant of servants, and thus the Lord becomes pleased. And the devotee then only can relish the taste of the tulsi leaves stuck to his lotus feet. In the Brahma Samhita, it is said that the Lord is never to be found by becoming a great scholar of the Vedic literature, but he is very easily approachable through his pure devotion. In Vrindavan, all the pure devotees pray for the mercy of Srimati Radharani, the pleasure potency of Lord Krishna. Srimati Radharani is a tender hearted feminine counterpart of the Supreme Whole resembling the perfectional stage of the worldly feminine nature. Therefore, the mercy of Radharani is available very readily by the sincere devotee. And once she recommends such a devotee to Lord Krishna, the Lord at once accepts the devotee's admittance in his association. 
The conclusion is, therefore, that one should be more serious about seeking the mercy of the devotee than that of the Lord directly. And by doing so, by the good will of the devotee, the natural attraction for the service of the Lord will be revived. अरे कृष्ण तो आज हमने श्लोक प्रोपात से दूसरे स्कंद के तीसरे अध्याय के तेईस विश्व श्लोक पर आज क्लास सुना प्रोपात शुरुआत में पूछ रहे थे कृष्ण कृष्ण भावना मृत का विकास इसका अरे कृष्ण so i think uh, they are going to uh, translate in hindi uh, that's why i wanted to stop there so we have heard from directly from propa uh, the the lecture from propa about this verse um, anything to reflect anything to discuss hari krishna Hare Krishna Prabhu Ji, Hare Krishna everyone. Uh, Prabhupada Ji has explained very nicely uh, about um, uh, what is the true, because the, the person who accompanied, who, who was Mr. Prabhupada, he is uh, Malik, he wrote, no, not Malik, he's Tilak, he wrote the, the Bhagavad Gita, but he didn't know what he was writing. But this, this text, uh, through this text we learn that we need to have a guru that is that is a pure devotee of the lord and without that pure devotee of the lord we don't get the mercy of the lord so we pray to radharani for sure radharani will help and also it talk about about rahugana and uh, janparat so janparat he he had like pre birth in bhagavatam pre birth a describe of janparat uh, first he was a bharat maharaj then what happened he left everything he went to the forest to meditate and then he got uh, attached to a deer a baby deer and then he got so attached to the baby deer that he forgot all his uh, spiritual uh, duties and uh, finally because the deer left he he also left his body so in his next birth he become a deer and then he because he had this previous knowledge he was a great devotee so then he he just stayed near the ashram of his of his uh, guru previous life guru so there from there then uh, he left the body of the of the deer he became again bharat but then this one, this time he didn't talk he didn't associate with anyone he was just sitting and his his brother said that oh he's good for nothing so they put him in the field you go and sit in the field and and just uh, look for the uh, look after the, the the plantation and push the birds away when they come to eat the the, the seeds so he just said okay this this land is for the lord the hill is for the lord the grains of the lord you are for the lord you come and eat so they said for this also he is not good and one day he met with with the king rahugan king rahugan was going to attend some uh, some uh, uh, katha and then uh, one of his uh, he was going in a palanquin you know four people need to carry that palanquin and uh, what happened to one of them he felt one of them felt sick then they wanted somebody to carry so they, they, they found jad bharat sitting under the tree they, okay he is big he is stout he can help so jad bharat okay he didn't say anything he just went he just went and then he was carrying the palanquin but whenever he was walking he would just if he saw uh, an ant or any tiny uh, jiva uh, uh, any tiny animals on the he would just jump and jump and, and every time he would jump not to walk on the on the, the living entity Uh, the king's head would just uh, hit the palanquin hit the palanquin and the king got angry and they stopped this palanquin and who is this one who is doing this then they said it's jad bharat so then then jad bharat he never spoke before then the king started chastising him then jad bharat said um, if i don't talk today this king will not get enlightened this king will never know then he started talking about the lord who are, are you telling a fool because the, the king said you fool why did you do that so then he gave he gave king rahugana a lesson like he he preached to rahugana then rahugana put him on the palanquin and take him to the katha so the, in this way um uh, uh, jad bharat uh, again and one another and stand he was saved again when they took him to offer to goddess kali 
and uh, all these these people say, okay, the Bharati is, is very nice to offer to Garastali. He went, and then um, Garastali manifested himself and killed all those people because Garastali knew that this Jad Bharat is a very pure devotee of the Lord. So this is the story of Jad Bharat. So Prabhuji, that's what I, I understood from this uh, from this text. Uh, if anybody has anything else to add, please go ahead. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji, for uh, for sharing uh, your thoughts. Um, also, Prabhupada mentions a uh, couple of times in the in the in the lecture that uh, <clears throat> the the renu, the the dust, the dust of the lotus feet of the devotee is how important. So you know, in in many um, of uh, our iskon uh, functions or you know iskon festivities, and if any Maharaj comes. Uh, devotees will be rushing to get the dust of the the lotus feet of uh, our uh, spiritual masters or great saints. So I was wondering in the initial stage, you know, why um, why this uh, you know why they're running after the lot lotus dust. So um, then you know slowly after uh, understanding the facts that lotus dust is so important that uh, um, just because uh, Nar Narada's example as uh, he was uh, eating the remnants of the the food left by the Mahabhagavatas, and then when he was serving uh, them with along with his mother, so he became so realized that he became uh, Narada in his next birth. So such is the the potency of the the lotus dust of a great Bhagavata. So Prabhupada explains between the the difference between book Bhagavata and then the person Bhagavata. So the person Bhagavata is non different from the book Bhagavata. While he's uh, he's living on the uh, on the on the statements of Bhagavata, and then if you take the if you get so fortunate enough to take the lotus feet of the lotus dust of the Mahabhagavata, so then you will get your heart will get transformed, and then all the um, unnecessary uh, things in the heart will get uh, will get erased. Uh, so that's what uh, I could uh, you know understand from this purport, Hare Krishna. Any other uh, uh, thoughts or reflections? Prabhuji, I just remembered one one small story about the death of the of there was uh, one one young brahmachari. He went to study uh, at a guru's place who lived near Jagovardhan Hill. So this brahmachari, when he went there, uh, the the old guru he he was living on his own. So there was a young gopi, a young girl. They call all the girls Gopi in Vrindavan, right? This girl, every day she will go, she will do Parikrama of Govardhan. But before going, she will stop at the, at the hut of the Guru. She will give a roti, a prasad, and then she will eat also, not with the Guru, but outside the hut. And then she will go for a Parikrama. So this, this young uh, Brahmachari, he didn't know who this, this girl was. This girl uh, reached there, gave prasad to the Guru, and then she sat down, she was eating. So this young Brahmachari came near her. She tended with her hand what she was eating. She gave to the Brahmachari. Brahmachari said, no, 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 I don't eat uh, leftovers because she was, she was already eating from it, Juta. So then the girl said, okay, so the girl finished eating. She, she took some water and then she shook her hand. She, she got her chappal, you know, the, the shoes, shook her shoes, put in the bag, and then she went. And this, this Brahmachari was stunned. Oh, this girl is so dirty. She ate with her hand. She put the shoes in the bag and she take roti from the same bag. And, she, and he went in. The girl went to the parikrama. He went in the, in the hut and he told her, the guru said, oh, this girl has roti, go and eat. The Brahmachari said, no, she's very dirty. I'm not going to eat from her hand because she ate with the same hand. She offered me what she was eating. Also, she put her, her sandals in the same bag that she got the roti from. The, the guru said, you are not fit to be my disciple because you haven't understood this gopi. The dust of Vrindavan is the best thing that you can take in, put on your head or even in your mouth. This gopi, she is very pure. So then if, if you decide to live with me, you have to eat whatever this girl brings every day. So this is the, the power of the dust. You know, when we go to Vrindavan, we always take a little bit and we bring home. But this dust, we should keep. And, and people, you know, Indian faith, not Indian faith, I mean, uh, uh, devotees, usually they'll put a little bit, if somebody, when somebody dies, we put a little bit of that dust 
in the coffin when it goes for burning. That's what uh, people do also. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji, for uh, the, that wonderful story uh, about the, the importance of the, the lotus dust of Vrindavan. Uh, I think it's it's time up now for uh, for us to wind up. So let's chant uh, Hare Krishna Mahamantra in glorification of His Divine Grace. Hey. Let's chant one. Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Hare. Krantaraj Mad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Ananda Koti Vesham Jashila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Hare Krishna. Thank you everyone for joining today. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, everyone. Hare Krishna.